Now to Venezuela, where people are voting in a controversial referendum that the government hopes will strengthen its claim over a territory in uh, neighbouring Guyana. The non-binding non vote aims to measure popular support for Venezuela's historical claim of Essequibo. And it comes after the UN's top court ordered Caracas to take no action that would alter Guyana's control over the territory. Essequibo is uh, 160,000 square kilometres, about the size of Greece, and uh, makes up about two-thirds of Guyana's landmass. Gas and oil were discovered there in 2015. Our next report will give you a sense of the mood in Guyana and in Venezuela in the run-up to the vote. This is Essequibo. Life is slow here. Jungle and farmland against the backdrop of mountains. At this market, farmers auction off produce. We are praying, we are hoping, and we are having faith that nothing negative would come. You know, what all these rumours that is happening, we are just praying and hoping and having faith that this is our lies. Venezuelans say Essequibo belongs to them because the region was within its boundaries during the Spanish colonial period. President Nicolas Maduro's government has also stepped up its campaign since the discovery of oil and gas. The referendum asks if Essequibo should be a state within Venezuela. We will not be calm until these people decide what we are going to do with the Essequibo territory. And it is you, dear brothers, comrades. It's not the bullets, it's not the cannons, it is the vote. Back in Essequibo, people are used to being ignored by the government. Information on the referendum has reached them mostly through social media, and most of it's inaccurate. They're angry with their own officials, but that doesn't mean they want to be part of Venezuela either. I will tell you the truth. Nobody, indigenous people, are not prepared for any takeover. Nobody has informed us, actually. Now it is being put on the table by us here as leaders trying to inform our people of the dangers that is above us at the moment. It's unclear how the results of the referendum will play out, if it passes. But many here in Essequibo fear the worst for the future. Let's get more from journalist Oscar Schlenker, who joins us from the Venezuelan capital, Caracas. Welcome, Oscar. Are authorities expecting a big turnout? Well, Phil, so far turnout is less than expected. At least what we're seeing now is very low turnout which is in contrast to the opposition self-organized primaries in October. We do have to take into account that this is a fairly quick process, so affluence of voters are taking less than a minute to vote. We have seen in other elections the strategy of government supporters flooding the police, polling stations towards the end of the day in order to keep the election going and justify giving results much later in the evening. So that is something that we could be expecting today as well, given that most of the voters are part of the government's militancy. So most of them are supporters, public workers, and people who receive benefits from um, Maduro's administration. Right. So uh, this debate about Essequibo has been around for decades. So why hold this referendum and now? Presumably this is to do with the, the uh, oil and gas find. Well, yes, there are many theories. First of all, it's a good opportunity to measure support for the electoral system ahead of presidential elections next year. It also serves as a rundown to welcome the recently appointed Electoral Council. Uh, politically, some analysts say it's a distraction to more serious problems in Venezuela. Others point at Maduro's administration seeking support from fringe voters. But the most unfortunate reason, I have to say, is this area's natural resources of oil, gas, and minerals. Guyana, for years, has allowed private companies to exploit this rainforest with little or no oversight and under the knowledge of Venezuela's government. Now, with sanctions and human rights investigations against Maduro's administration, it's also a way to lay grounds into the international court system and justify some sort of support through this referendum, even though it's non-binding. And is Guyana saying anything about this referendum? Well, both countries have been showing military support in defending the Essequibo. Guyana's president, Irfan Ali, raised a flag a few meters from the Venezuelan borders in the disputed Essequibo and spent a night with his troops there. Um, Guyana's government also asked the International Court of Justice to halt today's referendum. However, the UN's top court only ordered Venezuela to refrain from taking any action that would modify the disputed territory's current situation. 
Both countries saw that ruling as a victory. But the real losers in all this are the actual inhabitants and indigenous populations of this territory that suddenly have some unwanted attention from both countries and the companies that want to exploit it. So you, you mentioned um, uh, politicians here um, spending the night with their, their troops. Is, is there a risk of um, military escalation? Well, the most likely outcome to this situation is that it settles in court. Although Venezuela has the upper hand in military power and has been showing their teeth, Guyana has much more powerful allies. The question is, would these allies be willing to defend Guyana's government or the interest of companies ready to extract the natural resources in this territory? Okay, thank you for that, Oscar. Oscar Schlenker in Caracas.